Hey there, Becky here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to get creative with the drop down menu in your Squarespace website. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tricks to take that list of links and turn them into multiple columns. We'll add some subheaders or titles to those columns and we'll even include some images. Lots of cool stuff to cover today. Now, I've got some important timestamps and links to resources in the description below, but without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Here we are inside my Squarespace website. This is version 7.1, and you can see I have a drop down here that has a list of six different pages. Now, here inside my pages menu is where I created the drop down. Click this plus sign and select the drop down option if you don't have one on your website. You're going to want this option, and then you can drag and drop pages inside of the drop down just like this. Now, to add our custom code, we're going to navigate to Website Tools at the bottom of our Pages menu. Click on Website Tools, and your first option is Custom CSS. This is where you're going to paste the code that's listed underneath the video. And check it out, we now have those six links into two columns of three. We told Squarespace to take that folder content and break it into two columns, and then I added a column gap of 30px. That was perfect for the font size and style that I'm using, but you might want to change that to 50 or maybe change it down to 10 if you want it to be smaller. That part is super customizable. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the background of my drop down menu is the same color as my page, so it's really hard to see where the edge of the drop down menu is. I always love to add a little bit of a box shadow to lift it off of the page. This might not be in line with the design style on your website, but I'm going to share this code anyway because it's one of my favorites. I'm just going to add a quick RGBA code to give it a light gray. And there we go. Now the drop down has a light shadow behind it, so it's easy to see the difference between the drop down and the actual page itself. Now you can also add a border if you want to, maybe a quick subtle border, 1px solid, and let's make it a vibrant blue. There we go. Now we have a border around the drop down, which again helps separate it from the background of the page. Now that might not be the case for you. Yours might be a different color. And while we're here, why don't we go ahead and change that color? Let's add a semicolon and we're going to say background color spelled correctly. Background color. There we go. Let's go for uh, one of my favorite shades of light blue. Okay, we added the code and nothing changed, so that means we need to make sure this code is important so the computer browser picks up on our color change, and there we go. So a quick recap before we move on, we took the folder content and we said make it two columns and make sure there's a 30px gap in between those two columns of links. Then we added a little bit of a shadow to lift it off the page, we gave it a border, and we changed the background color. Lots of fun stuff happening here already. Now next, I'm going to show you how to create some headers. But before I do that, I need to mention this pro tip. These codes are for desktop only. This is not changing the mobile version of my website. You'll see if I click down into here, a drop down menu becomes its own navigation on mobile. Nothing's happening on mobile. This is only for the desktop version of our site that we see when we hover over the link, okay? All right, let's select save and keep going. Going. Now this next code here is going to look a little complicated, but stick with me here. I'm going to walk you through it. We just added text to our drop down menu. We added a column one label and a column two label. And this is how we did that. We told the computer browser that before the very first active link, we wanted it to say column one. Then I added white space pre. What that does is turn this character set right here, that backward slash A, that makes a space. If we remove that line of code, column one and the first link are going to be on the same line. That's not what we want. So we want to make sure we say white space pre. Now the rest of this, it's just a style change that I made. I liked the idea of making these labels look a little bit different than the links. So I added some spacing between the characters. I made them uppercase. I changed the font size. I changed the color of the font. And I gave it a little bit of space between the actual link and the text underneath. All of this is super customizable and optional. You can remove it and it will look just like the links below. But I think it's important to differentiate between the label and the link. So I loved adding that style. Now, this next part here that I'm going to highlight with my cursor, this is very important. And I'll tell you why. Did you see that this first code here says first child A before? And this next code says nth child four 
a before. That has to do with the number of links. I wanted to make sure that the label for my second column was above the fourth link, the word portfolio right here in my site. You're going to want to change this number. Watch what happens when we set it to five or to six. That changes the location of that label. Because my column of six links turned into two columns of three, I needed to make sure that this was above the fourth link, which would be the first link in the second column. I hope that makes sense. Let me show you one more time what happens if we change this to two or three or four or five or six. Again, I have six links, so I want this to be on the fourth link. This will show up above that link, so that's why I've added that there. And just like we saw in the other code, lines 20 through 24 right here are just some customizing for the design. I want that label to look different than the rest of the content there that's a clickable link, so I made sure to style it differently with some creative CSS. All right, my friend, I've got one more advanced code to share with you. I'm very excited about it. This code is actually going to go in this first part right here where we have the header nav folder content. This very first selector is what's going to need this code. After background color, I'm going to add a semicolon and a new line, and I'm going to paste a whole lot of code that I'm going to walk you through. But check out what happens. We now have an image on that dropdown. We have a little icon of a planet on the left-hand side of column one, which is a super fun way to really make your dropdown look unique. So what we've done here in this code, let me go ahead and scroll back up here. We've actually added a background image to the dropdown. This is the URL for the image itself. Now, I have quite a few images here on my site, and I'll show you exactly where they live and how to change this URL. I'm going to remove that text. You'll see I immediately have a dropdown to work with. But right here, above our custom CSS, are our custom hosted files. Clicking on this, I can choose any icon I want. Let's go for a rocket ship. Now that I've clicked on it, it's placed the URL in my code, and we can now see a rocket ship right there on our drop-down menu. Now, after that, I've got some customizations that you are absolutely going to want to change for your own unique image. The background size is the size of this image here. If I want it to be bigger, I need to change that 60 to 100, or maybe 20 if I want it to be smaller. Super customizable, and that's going to be unique for the size of your image and the size of your drop-down. Now, after that, we've changed the background position. 10px scoots it over a little bit so it's not right up on the edge. If I change that to zero, see how the rocket ship aligns closer to the left? I wanted to pull it in just a little bit, so I changed that to 10px. I've also said background repeat, no repeat. This part of the code is important. Watch what happens when I remove that part of the code. It's full of rocket ships. Way too many rocket ships. We only want one. So I said background repeat, no repeat. After that, we have two parts of the code that are very important for making sure that the image gets its own space. We added some padding to the left. Because my background image was 60px, 100 felt like a good amount of space, so I'd have room between the icon and the actual links. Watch what happens if we change that to 10. Those links and that icon are going to run into each other. I can change it to 80 but that's not really that much space. I thought 100 looked a little bit better for my own design style. Super customizable, and you're gonna wanna change this value for padding left. Now we've also said margin left, negative 70 PX. That scoots the drop down over, so the links are directly underneath what we're hovering over to see the drop down. When we remove that, the rocket ship will be directly under the link, and I wanted to kind of center the whole thing underneath the drop-down link, so I went ahead and added margin left negative 70 PX, but again, super customizable. You don't even need that part of the code if you don't want it, but these parts of the code you're absolutely going to want to edit. And one last time, make sure you change this part of the code by clicking on custom files and uploading your own image here. If you remove this text, Make sure you've got both parentheses there. You'll see a drop down of all the images that you've uploaded. You can also open custom files and click on the actual one you want. Let's change it to the moon. And now if you take a look, we've got the moon icon featured there. That's how you update that URL to your own hosted file. We made so many changes, I'm gonna go ahead and select save. And before we call this tutorial good to go, I've got one last very important thing to teach you. What if here inside our Squarespace website, we have more than one dropdown? I'm gonna click the plus sign and let's add another one. And I'll call this one second dropdown. And let's go ahead and drag a page into that. 
And now when we hover over second dropdown, we are getting some messy stuff here. That's not what we want at all. Let's go ahead and pull this so it is the second in our list. We have the dropdown example in second dropdown. Back here inside our custom CSS, we've got to make some changes. In front of the code that we added to create the two column effect and add the image, this whole thing right here, we're going to place the text header nav item nth of type one. Now check it out. The second dropdown, it's no longer getting the image. It's no longer being broken out into columns. If we remove that code, here's what it looked like before. If we add that code, what we're doing is saying apply this whole thing right here to the very first item in the navigation. Now, if your dropdown is item four, item five, change this number to four or to five, whatever it needs to be so that you're identifying which link the dropdown is, okay? Now, there are two more places you'll need to add that right here before the column one label and right here before the column two label. Now we've got column one and all those links, but this second dropdown has gone back to normal. All of our changes are only happening for this dropdown, which at this time is the first link in my navigation. Definitely an important thing to know if you have more than one dropdown on your Squarespace website. I'm gonna go ahead and select save and we'll call this advanced tutorial good to go. All right, we just covered a lot in this tutorial, my friend, and I hope you found it helpful. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and let me know in the comments and definitely check out the resource links that I have listed below. I've got some important details on how you can customize that drop-down menu, including links to all of the codes that we used in this video, because as you know, we just covered a lot. So definitely check those out when you're ready to apply these styles to your own Squarespace website. Thanks again for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.